Everybody loves New Bike Day, and this comes a close second for me because this is New Bike Day for my wife, Vaughn. So in today's video, I'll take you through the full top to bottom specifications of the custom spec Aspero that we've built her up. I'll take you through all the tools and resources that I used to get the job done. This was my first time doing all the hydro work on a SRAM bike. I'll give you my impressions of the bike, given I had to take out and test my handiwork before handing it over to Vaughn. And then I'll invite Vaughn on to have a chat about the bike, her first impressions, how it rides, and to see if there's anything she'll change on the bike already. First things first, why another Cervelo Aspero? We already have one here in the Llama Garage. Well, Vaughn had an Aspero on loan from our local bike store, Bikes on La Trobe, for a few months, and she liked the ride of that. She's also ridden mine a few times, and she loved the simplicity of the ETAP group set off-road over the mechanical Shimano GRX on that loan bike. Vaughn searched high and low for a new Aspero frame in her size and in a colour that wasn't the same as mine. In current times, almost impossible, but she did manage to find one. She found an almost brand new frame from somebody who had just upgraded their Aspero to the Aspero 5. Yes, this frame is already out of date. Onto the glam shots of the bike, the frame and fork, as mentioned, a Cervelo Aspero 2020 in 54 centimeters and in red, or what I would call deep cherry red. This actually looks pretty nice in the sunshine. The seat post is an Easton EC70. The group set is a SRAM rival ETAP axis in a one by configuration. Each component, well, we have the levers, SRAM rival ETAP axis, the rear derailleur, SRAM rival ETAP axis, the cassette, 1036 ratio. It's a rival chain. Chain loop, we've chosen to go with the Silka Super Secret Chain Loop, which keeps things nice and clean on the dirty, dusty trails. The chain set, Vaughn is using the SRAM Rival Quark Dub Wide, 172.5 mil with a 40 tooth direct mount chain ring. This unit is a single sided spindle based power meter that has been featured on this channel in recent months. The bottom bracket is a wheels manufacturing BB Wright outboard, dub 29 mil, with additional spaces for the dub wide compatibility. The calipers are SRAM Rival. The rotors, we've gone up a few steps here and chosen the SRAM Centerline XR 160mm centerlock back and front. The bars are the Zip Service Course 70 Explore bar tape, Zip Service Course, and keeping the trend alive using the Zip Service Course SLOS 90mm stem. Vaughn's using the Specialized Power with Mimic in 155 for the saddle. The wheels are the Scribe Aero Wide Plus 50D Carbon Wheel Set. Now I had these wheels set up as road wheels for a few test rides and I did reach out to Scribe to ask if they'd be suitable for this purpose on the gravel bike. The answer was, yeah, sure. They're 21 mil internal, so they'll hold these 40 mil tires just fine. Do note these are road wheels, but given current times of supply being quite thin, this is what we're going with. We have Muckoff tubeless valves in red, we might need to upgrade these to 80 mil just to get a little bit more stem for inflation. The tires weren't our first choice, but we had to go with what was in stock. These are Goodyear Connector Ultimates in 40 mil. The sealant used is Stans. The pedals are the Shimano SPD M540 XCs. The bottle cages are Elite T Race. The T standing for, well, that's what they look like. And for bike tracking, we have the Apple AirTag installed. Given this was my first complete build of a SRAM group set with Hydro, I didn't film it. I wasn't going to do a how-to video when I was the student. There were a number of tips and tricks and tools that I picked up along the way. The tools being the most important part because without the correct tools, you can't really do much. Kicking off with a torque wrench. It's a must have if you're building a bike. So I've been using the Pro Torque Wrench, which goes from three to 15 Newton meters. Always handy to have one of those in the kit. Next up is the SRAM Professional Bleed Kit. This was my first time doing SRAM hydro work. I picked up the professional bleed kit with the uh, fluid in there. Now, diving through the documentation, when I got to the levers to hook the hoses to the levers, they said I needed an eight mil, they call it an open-ended crow foot wrench. I had no idea what one of those was. So I was searching high and low. We were in lockdown, nothing was open, nobody had one. Um, found out a few hours later, one comes in the kit. Everybody who knows this is probably laughing at me already. That allows you to attach the hoses to the levers with the correct torque. Without that, it's gonna be guesswork. If you're an experienced mechanic, you might be able to get away without those. Me, a non-experienced mechanic, especially when it comes to this hydro work, needed one of those. So hats off to SRAM for including that tool in this kit. That was a lifesaver. Another thing relating to the hoses is getting the correct length. Now I wasn't quite sure if the Shimano hose cutting tool would work. Actually, I don't need that part, just this part here. 
I've used this before on my DI2 road bikes with hydro, but this also works with SRAM hoses. That was another handy one to have in the toolkit already. No need to source another part and wait a few days for it to be delivered. Next was trying to find dot compatible grease to use on the thingamajig, or stealthamajig, I think SRAM call it. Again, for the hoses going into the levers. Now I couldn't find the SRAM grease, nothing was open. The closest I could find was Penrite rubber grease. I believe this is okay. It's been working okay so far. We can't find too much documentation about this, um, but it's the red grease I won't pour. It'll go everywhere. But it's that red sticky grease. You can't just use any old grease with dot fluid. I believe your cat will die and your budget regard will fall off the perch if you do that. So you need dot compatible grease. Not quite sure if this is right. Let me know in the comments if you know anything about greases, but I could not find. This is the Penrite rubber grease in red. Um, it says all the right things here on the back, but it doesn't mention dot anywhere. Hmm. Anyhow, we'll roll with it. Um, other things, assembly compound, making sure all those carbon parts aren't going to slide anywhere. This is the old tax stuff um, that I had in the Llama garage. Not quite sure tax or Garmin make uh, assembly compound anymore. Um, second last in my toolkit, Feedback Sports. Uh, use the T-Wrench kit. I love this thing. Um, any old Allen key set will work. These are just nice to have. T-Wrenches, nice to hold, nice to turn. And my beloved internal cable routing kit. Um, did I hold, I actually held that the right way. IR 1.2 by Park Tool. I almost forgot to add this to the video because I used it for about two minutes. Threading the cables through and job done. This thing is an absolute gem. If you've threaded internal cables with these, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you've threaded internal cables without these, you know exactly the frustrations I'm talking about. This thing, lifesaver, links below. With the bike fully assembled, before I could confidently hand it over to Vaughn to ride, I thought I'd take it out for a test ride myself. Nothing like an excuse to go out for a ride. Now, this Espero is the same frame as mine, the same frame size as mine, so the handling was very, very familiar. What was different was the group set. I'm running the Red Eagle combination, and Vaughn's running the Rival Axis. And to be honest, I was actually surprised with how well the Rival worked. I don't know quite what I was expecting, but there really wasn't much to it. Up down, the gear changes were crisp. Yes, the rival's a little heavier, but it's nothing you can really feel while you're riding the bike. It's probably about half a bit in the water difference between my setup and hers. So it performed very, very well. So the question, I guess, uh, Red Eagle or Rival? Well, for a dream build, always the Red Eagle. That's just brilliant. If budget is a consideration, the Rival Axis one by setup works just fine. If you need a little bit more gearing on the back, the Rival and Explore setup to get you a 44 on the back, Maybe another option that's a little easier on the budget than the full dream bike setup. Which leads me into the gearing of this bike that we've built up. Um, the 40 on the front and the 36 on the back just wasn't enough gears for me. The test ride that I did on Vaughn's bike was exactly the same course as I did the day before on my bike. Same distance, same effort, and here are the stats. The stats there on the right are from Vaughn's bike and you can see I spent way too much time in the 36. Over on the left, the time spent above 36 was kind of evenly shared with all the other gears that I had above 36. Now, of course, you don't need SRAM Access Web to tell you you need more gears. You can feel that pretty quick, but I thought that was quite interesting seeing that in the stats. But my overall impression of the bike, it was fast, and that's probably due to the fast road wheels that we've put on that. The 50mm deep wheels from Scribe, the 40mm tires from Goodyear, plus the brand new group set, new chain, everything feels fast. Before bringing Vaughn in for a chat about the bike, the two things that I would personally change, the rear gearing. That 36 just isn't enough with the Rival. Now the Rival is maxed out with a 36, so the options would be to go either up to the Explore, which would get up to a 44 tooth on the back, or go the full send mullet with the Eagle, getting the bike up to a 52 on the back. Secondly, the Rival Axis levers don't have auxiliary ports for those climbing shifters or multi-clicks or blips, SRAM call them. You could add a blip box to this to allow for those remote shifters, but that's an expensive way to add those auxiliary shifters. But overall, the rival performed very, very well. Okay, let's get Vaughn on to have a chat about her experience with the bike. Vaughn, welcome along to talk about your new bike day. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask you how it was, but there you go, there's the answer straight away. So you're happy with it, overall impressions? No, no, I really, really like the build that you've done on this. Um, uh, maybe I'm biased as well. Uh, <laughs> no, no. The frame, as we mentioned earlier, is one of the hardest things to come by. And I 
love red things. I've always had red bikes. So to find a beautiful candy apple red in the sun, it just goes absolutely off um, and sparkles and shines and then gets covered in dust and then it'll come out again, the sunshine and shine again. So really love it. Um, the overall bike feel is amazing. Really familiar with it, as we mentioned about the loaner bike earlier. Um, also, I couldn't believe how fast it was. That was the other thing I was surprised about. You were a bit worried about the tyres. We could only find those good years in 40 mils. Yeah. Um, you wanted a tyre with a, a solid centre line. That's right. For less rolling resistance. So that was the same um, configuration that I had on all of the other gravel bikes that I'd tried in the past. So going with what I knew, I was going to try that again. Um, no so stock. No stock. No stock. Uh, but and I was I was expecting when I rolled out the first time down the road on the tarmac to get to the gravel that it would have that mountain bike kind of sluggish, grippy feel um, with the lower pressures. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But not at all. Not at all. Um, and it didn't have any kind of like a tractor. Tr the whirring noise. Yeah, yeah. You know when you're, you're on a bike, you, a four wheel drive goes past with lower tire pressure, you hear the rrrr. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you that, didn't that, get any of that. that right. That, that, as well. uh, that also comes down to the road wheels, which I have spoken of. They're road wheels from Scribe. They're not specific f for gravel, but they work quite well. They're wide enough yeah. internal and they're super deep. Yeah, that, that was the other thing about the super deep. Um, you can definitely feel it in a crosswind. Mm -hmm. I'm used to that kind of uh, wheel configuration from my road cycling days, so I can feel it in a crosswind, absolutely. And you can hear it in a crosswind too, I hear. <laughs> that was the first thing <laughs> around the sound from when I rolled out of the driveway the first time. Anybody who owns a set of scribe wheels or has friends with scribe wheels or has a neighbour with, you know what the free hub is. <laughs> It is very, very loud. We can tame that down a little bit, which is one of the things I've got to do to the bike, um, but very, very loud free hub. Um, okay, so frame good, frame yep. color, the most important thing about the bike um, was good, frame size, frame fit, uh, yes. tires, gearing, because you're a DI2 fan, as am I, yes. but off-road, the simplicity of the one by? Oh, I'm sold. It was fantastic. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, I was... Um, cautious to try it the first time round um, to see how it would perform and I thought I would get really confused between my road bike with DI2. Because up and down here for, for Shimano and up and down here for SRAM and you did come from the GRX mechanical. Oh, two hands, yeah. Yeah, so you've, you've got to use two hands to change gears on this. Yeah, now I'm confused. <laughs> Keep it simple, up, yeah. down, easy. And, and yeah. that's what I like about um, that for a gravel scenario and terrain when you're out mm. there. You don't have to worry about, oh, do I, have, I just want more gears or less gears? Um, and, and that's how you use your hands, more or less gears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't have to think, do I need to now swap to a chain ring and check and any of those Drop things. Drop a chain. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. You've just got more or less gears. Okay, now we'll, we that's will good. return to the gearing in just a moment. Uh, bar width? Uh, yes, I um, I went wider than my road bike, so I knew with my you know current kind of shoulder width, I wanted to go wider for gravel. But they flare a little bit, so you, yeah, yeah, you think yeah, wider when you're and flare. In the drops, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I would, if if I had my time again, I'd probably even go wider. Warmer wide, or just a few. <laughs> no, no. Shout oh. out to, to Curve Cycling for the warmers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so not warmer wide, but you'd go a little wider. Yeah, I, I get that. Yep. A little bit more handling off-road. Yeah. Uh, and also the bar bag um, real estate as well. We've got the Rafa bag on the front. Um, yeah. You need a little bit more space on the front. Okay, cool. Now, back to the gearing. Let's talk about the gearing. My take was it didn't have enough. Your take? It didn't have enough. <laughs> <laughs> I can, so we concur. I, we concur. I didn't know from my first ride because the first ride was relatively flat um, through uh, gravel farm roads. Yeah, there's, there's um, two directions. Two direction here's in Ballarat. That way's flat, yeah. that way's hilly. So the second ride was that way and grind sesh. <laughs> it, yeah, it was pretty difficult. Um, and having ridden the other two bikes on the same terrain, yep. knowing that what my capacity to ride up those were, I'm like, what? <laughs> what happened to my fitness? <laughs> it wasn't about the fitness, it was definitely about the gearing. <laughs> All right, okay, so before I finish off this video, overall happy? Oh, yes, yes, very happy to have a gravel bike, um, good setup, really happy to spend plenty of hours yeah. out on the bike. The weather's just about to change here to hot, dry, and dusty, which these bikes are built for. And Vaughn, I have a present to give you for uh, as a thank you gift for coming on the channel. 
that's a 44. Mm, delicious. Now, to put a 44 on the bike though, we have to have something else. So I've got you two gifts. Oh. We have a rear derailleur for Vaughn as well. This is the Explore. Which Fantastic. Will so this will, this will be compatible with this? Correct. So ah. you could use the rival axis, which will be compatible with that. That's the brains of the unit. So that's the red Explore, which will be going onto a bike. This will be a whole other video we'll do the upgrade on, and then we'll come back and have a chat to Vaughn about the gearing on that. But the third gift will be a new chain, because we need a longer chain for this as ah. well, given that. So we've got that, that extra ring goodness. We, we've got that covered. And you're happy with the super secret lube that we've run, even though it gets a bit noisy after about five minutes of riding? I'll be, I'll be honest, it's good, it's clean, but my word. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, that should be fine, especially uh, over the, the hot, dusty days coming up. Yep, yeah, keeps things clean. But yeah, it will never be this clean again, so admire. It's a beautiful thing. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching this one, and we'll be back soon with a, uh, I guess, an upgrade, an upgrade. video. <laughs> See you soon. Thanks, Vaughn. Thanks.